Hi everybody, I'm Melissa McLean. I'm the delivery director here at Qualagens. And I'm Kirk Kameg, SVP of Global Customer Success. We're here to talk to you today a little bit about everything Qualagens in terms of products, services, what do we do? How do we do what we do? Yep. People can't often pronounce our name, let alone <laughs> what we do in the industry. So we wanted to have a little bit of fun with a blank whiteboard and talk through a little bit about how it is that our clients come to us, what do we provide, what do we offer, what does it look like in terms of the life cycle of, of the experience that is Qualagents? Yeah, what makes this different, right? From agency, from corporate, um, from anything really out there in the industry. So one of the things when I started here that makes us different, right? Research. Research, absolutely. Yes. So Kirk, if I was somebody who didn't know anything about Qualagents, tell me a little bit about what research does. So 18 years ago, when I started in research, it really is a differentiator in the sense that we are looking out in the market for talent that you can't find today. Yep. So it is, where can I find what I'm looking for that's beyond the names that are on LinkedIn, right? So yep. 18 years ago, LinkedIn didn't really exist. How do we find it? We did a lot of intelligence online, looking for information and gathering various points of intelligence for clients that they haven't been able to find on their own. Yeah, and calling in, right? Back right. when, Absolutely. still do that now, but I think LinkedIn too, it's important to say we don't just look at the title, right? And we look at functions of people and research can provide a lot of different market data, I yeah. think most importantly to clients. So Absolutely. what are some of the differentiators for market data that we could provide? So I'd say compensation information, compensation studies, uh, heat maps on various talent and where it exists in the market. So Super a lot of times now with remote. Yeah, you know where are the people doing the things that we're looking for. So a lot of times you get asked, hey, we're in the middle of Iowa, but we're trying to hire people nationally. Where can we find the best type of infrastructure talent yep. or architectural talent? So we go out and identify it from coast to coast where it exists and then provide that information back to our clients. Yes, which also I think important with remote, like I said, with people scattered about now, clients are kind of trying to figure out where is everybody? <laughs> where did everyone go? Are they still in the same spots? Are we still gonna be able to find the business banker in where I originally thought, or if they moved to another spot where maybe we could think about a branch or anything else expanding the business. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's key for us to provide that information because a lot of times what's out there in in on the web or on Google is what we put out there publicly, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. our researchers are going and validating the information. They're making sure they're still at the institutions that, that they say that they're at online yep. and that all the data including phone numbers, emails, any sorts of uh, social media avenues that they exist on, we're identifying what that is so that either it's our own internal talent team, which is another level of service we offer, yep. or our clients' ter in, uh, internal teams that they then take those names and they recruit from. Yeah, I think that's important too, verifying the contact information, huge differentiator because now that everybody is remote, phone numbers, right? They're difficult to find. How do you get a hold of candidates? Like you said, LinkedIn didn't exist, but that's the primary, but also at this point, everybody's on LinkedIn, right? So how do we find and reach out to that passive talent or how do we help clients do that? And that's a huge part of it is verifying just the simple contact information that might help them be able to contact some candidates and get them into play. Absolutely. And I think, you know, as we continue to get smarter and smarter with that research, it only makes one of our next primary service yeah. levels, which is sourcing. Um, just so everybody knows, uh, a couple years ago, we didn't really have here at Qualagents. And as we kind of started you know, being every day in the market thinking, well, we're kind of missing something here, right? Because we had research and like Kirk mentioned, we had recruiting, which we'll get to, but there was that in between. And what could we offer clients where maybe they have an internal um, already set up recruiting staff or, or TA team that they can go ahead and call themselves, but they just need what we call warm leads, right? So that was kind of how sourcing became born here <laughs> um, at Qualagens. And we like to say still though, our sourcing is still very different than a lot what some people might consider sourcing in terms of we're still looking for quality, not quantity. So even with our sourcing, we're still not just sending over anybody and everybody who says they're open to talking. We're really asking 
pre-qualifier questions that we discuss with the client and agree upon. And they're not just yes or no questions, right? We tell the clients, we want you to give us as many as you can so we can have still an in-depth conversation with the candidate, but tee up those warm leads for uh, the recruiting team um, for our clients. Also connecting research typically um, with sourcing or sourcing can be on its own where we have high volume roles that for instance, we just might not need a ton of contact information and we just might need to find a bunch of profiles and we can get the contact information later, but we can start doing the outreach. Yeah, and one of the things to add to that, Melissa, is that with sourcing, you know, so many agencies out there are geared around how do we produce the most? How can I get 50 resumes over into my hands of my client? Well, yeah. that's the last thing we want to do. We want to produce the most qualified, even within sourcing, yep. the most qualified individuals that's not going to waste the time of our clients who are ideally pressed for time and only want to focus on those that are viable, interested, and meet that preliminary criteria that we look for in each of the candidates. So you might only have one or two submittals inside of a sourcing yep. project a week, but those are one or two submittals that you're going to probably want to talk to take through the funnel and potentially be submit to internally to your hiring manager. And you know that we've verified them and they're meeting those pre-qualifiers that we all agreed upon with the partnership with the client to say, don't pass anybody <laughs> through unless they hit these marks. Absolutely. So it's been a great bridge, like Kirk said, between research and kind of the middle ground and then what part of the business is built on, right, is recruiting. So for us, um, we do recruiting differently in many ways, um, not only because research is attached to it, but just the way we interview candidates um, and still focus on that quality piece versus the quantity piece like Kirk was talking about. We always say right fit, right role, right person, right reasons, right company, right hiring manager, all of that stuff goes into the way we recruit and how we know our candidates and the way we question them on results-based interviewing and behavioral-based interviewing. It's a practice that we just continue to strive to get better at, um, just to make sure again that we are our goal is to find the right candidate for the client that is going to be a long-term fit. You know, we're not looking for the 90 days, the six months, nine months, year. We're really looking for somebody that is the right fit for that client, that hiring manager, that company, all of those things, and not just focusing on the hire. Yeah, we've often had requests that have the same function. So pick a product manager, mm -hmm. two different hiring managers, both looking for something completely different. Yep. So the individuals being submitted for uh, hiring manager number one versus number two could be night and day different. But yeah. ideally, you're only submitting those that are specifically catered to that hiring manager, which is not something that you get from anybody else, really, if you think yeah. about it. So we fight against those that those competitors of ours that are constantly submitting every product manager that says, oh, yes, I'll talk. Oh, yes, I, I'll talk. And it's usually product managers that come from a database versus our product managers who've been developed usually within the past several days, who we know that have the background, have the match, and ideally based on some of the you know, criteria that we've established, they're going to be aligned to that manager, to that team, and to the broader organization, which should equate to longevity within the organization that yeah. we're working with. And I think one of the other differentiators too with candidates, we I would say 99.9% .9 I always say of candidates for us are passive, meaning they are not in the market. So they're not on job boards applying to every open position or they're not working with other agencies and shopping around and interviewing everywhere. We are really going after the folks in the market that aren't necessarily looking, but that's sometimes the best talent you know, because everybody's not doing that. And I think also us not being commissioned as recruiters. Yeah, That's a absolutely. huge, huge thing for us um, because it helps candidates understand as well that we're just not looking to get a paycheck, right, Kirk, to get them in the door yeah. and get the hire. And it also, with the clients, helps them understand that we really are looking for the right person for the right role. And no placement fees. Yes. I know we, I, yes. You, you, inside of recruiting or inside of sourcing, if we hire seven people inside of one project all under one cost, there are no additional fees that are associated with any placement whatsoever. First yep. one, last one, no upfront project fees, no back end fees. Um, there are th the advantages to knowing that you could replicate either one of these for multiple openings is quite frankly a no brainer for yeah. me, you know, with yeah. looking at how we support our clients. So these are our core services. Um, you know, they connect 
with one another, like Kirk said, they can stand alone, but um, we're really proud of the continued work that we do here and just the development that we continue to have internally with all our employees and just the continued learning that we do based on what the market is saying. Yeah, and if you guys have any questions on any of this, including some of the other services yeah. that we offer within the organization and in between these, and if you wanna have any sort of consultative conversation around, hey, this is the scenario I've got, what could you do? I'm pretty sure we could come up with a solution that marries one, two, three, all any a combination thereof. Agreed. Um, give us a call, we'll help you figure that out and deliver the best possible product we could. Yep, like Kirk said, no client is the same, so. Yeah, absolutely. Yep.